It is coming. It is, it is coming. <laughs> Seeing as how The Incredibles 2 is right around the corner, and Toy Story 2's 20th anniversary is on the horizon, I thought I'd take the time to look at one of the most fondly remembered movie tie-in games of all time. Of course, it's positioned below Spider-Man 3 and Hannah Montana, but there's no shame in being on the podium. Anyway, it's fair to say that the Toy Story franchise has fared better than most in the medium of games based on their respective movies. They started off well with the gorgeous Mega Drive platformer, and ended in agreeable circumstances with Toy Story 3. But this, this was the highlight of the series. So, what is the game all about? Well, it's a collectathon 3D platformer in the vein of Super Mario 64 or Spyro the Dragon, but you play as the world's favourite space ranger, meaning you can jump ridiculous heights, use a bloody laser beam to kill other toys, and stomp on things. Fun times. It's a simple formula that makes for some excellent level design because everything is perfectly to scale from the perspective of a toy making boss fights even more threatening and this lawnmower even more deadly. Ziplining down a washing line only to land in a basket to collect a toy soldier is one of the best ideas I've ever seen in a video game. Or it would be if the controls were better so I wouldn't have to keep falling down when trying to move between the lines, but we'll get to that. Other characters from the film also appear to give you tasks or challenges, which doesn't make thematic sense considering they are meant to help you find Woody, but at least it gives you a reason to admire the levels for longer. Especially considering you can gain character upgrades allowing you to access collectibles that were impossible to reach earlier in the game, such as this poor bundle of sheep. This wouldn't be such an issue if the characters would shut up once in a while. Buzz, buzz, can you find my sheep? Buzz, buzz, buzz. Give me a minute! I can see why they keep repeating themselves. There was limited disc space on the PS1 CDs, and obviously they had to fill it with the wonderful video clips you see here. I were going to do the same. Come again? Sorry? Never mind. It was a done deal that anyone with this game was going to see the film eventually. Thank goodness the game's visuals fared better than these clips. In fact, I'd say this is one of the better looking games on the PS1. Alright, it's no Tekken 3 or Spyro the Dragon but the art style is damn near perfect, and although Buzz doesn't look too much like himself, he still looks better than Disney's own plushies. Every character is easily distinguishable, the draw distance is acceptable, the frame rate is rock solid, and the loading times are pretty good for an early CD-based console. The limits of the system can be seen when searched for, but the console was good enough to bring forward the developer's ideas and it did so very well. And my god, the music. This is perhaps the biggest highlight of the game, Near enough, every track is catchy, memorable, and joyous. However, in the nostalgic age of remasters and remakes, I'm sure there is a lot to be gained from a modern upgrade to this game. My reasoning stems from my biggest issues with this game. The controls and the camera. The amount of times I missed a coin, fell off a ledge, missed the washing line or got run over by a lawnmower was embarrassing. The main culprit is the lack of camera control on the right analogue stick. I understand that this was the early days of dual analogue movement, but it's just sitting there doing nothing of value whilst I'm trying not to get murdered. All this serves to do is to put a brick wall in front of Buzz every time you want to make a tight turn. Once you've stopped you have the choice of moving in the direction you want to look and hope there's no ledge nearby, or hold the L2 and R2 buttons for a long, bloody, time. These aren't deal breakers, but if these controls were modernised there's no doubt that it would make for a more enjoyable game. As far as PS1 games go though, it's up there with the best of them. I would easily put this just below Super Mario 64 as one of the best controlling 3D platformers of the 90s. If nothing else, this game is just pure fun in a way that feels very... Nintendo-ish. I really should use a dictionary once in a while. It feels very much like a prototype for the LEGO games that the developer, Traveller's Tales, would go on to make in the following years. We can ignore their first attempt at Crash Bandicoot. Everyone has an off day. All in all, if I were Traveller's Tales, I would be delighted to have this game on my CV and show that despite some shortcomings, they were capable of making wonderful family-friendly games in a timely fashion as far back as 1999. So well done Toy Story 2, and for all that you've done right, here's a bonus reward. You had best un yourself or I will unscrew your head and shit down your neck! Thanks Sergeant Hartman, and thank you for watching. What did you think? Would you like me to cover more games? Let me know in the comments below. I've been Harry, and I'll see you soon.